Hello everyone, my name is Dee Sanders. I am a third year microbiology PhD student in the Department of Plant and Microbial Biology under the supervision of Dr. Amy Grundon. And growing up, I was always interested in the wildlife around me and I knew that I wanted a career that would allow me to study that. Being that I knew that I wanted to go into being either a veterinarian or a wildlife ecologist, I wanted to go to NC State because I knew we had one of the best animal science programs and I came to NC State as a zoology major. And as I got more exposure to the various types of science, I became passionate about the life around us that we couldn't see, the microbes. I discovered what it truly meant when people would say microbes are everywhere and I wanted to explore the connection between the world and these unseen creatures as well as how we might be able to take advantage of them to help create a more sustainable society. And you may be thinking, wait, I thought this lecture was about clothes. Why is she talking about microbes? But what if I told you the two are connected? Take a look at your arm. You might see some of your hairs, a little sweat, maybe a birthmark or a few skin flakes. But what you don't see is that there are millions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that call your skin home. These skin microorganisms help protect you from invading microbes that can make you sick and also serve several other roles on your skin. And what do we wear on top of our skin? Clothes. Clothes keep us warm and protect our bodies from the external environment but they also create a warm and often moist environment on the skin, which bacteria love, and may lead to the growth of bacteria. Skin microorganisms can transfer to clothing, but they can also come from other sources, such as the manufacturer or the store you bought it from. These bacteria may grow on clothing by getting nutrition from your sweat, the skin cells you shed, the fibers in the clothing itself, or from sources in the environment. For instance, here is a picture of E. coli cells adhering to polyester fabric. So you see, we can't discuss clothing without discussing bacteria. Our clothes are polluting the environment. Clothing is often made of materials that are difficult to degrade biologically and may take years or even decades and centuries to fully decompose. One example is polyethylene terephthalate, otherwise known as PET, which is a synthetic compound that is often used to make polyester in clothing as well as in plastic bottles. Researchers worldwide are looking for ways to use microbes to help tackle both clothing and plastic pollution. For example, researchers in Germany have engineered marine algae to produce an enzyme called PETASE that is able to degrade PET in the environment. My research focuses on discovering microbial enzymes that could potentially help break down some of the compounds that many of clothes are made with. Our hope is to use them in processes in order to help make the clothing industry more sustainable. By looking at the genes bacteria turn on or off in the presence of clothing compounds, we'll likely be able to determine what genes and enzymes bacteria use to break down those compounds and then can engineer those genes to make them more efficient. My research also focuses on finding new methods to help prevent or reduce clothing odor that may be caused by bacteria growing on or living in clothing. So as we can see, microbes aren't just germs to get rid of. They form a community with us, including on our clothes, in us and around us. We can learn from these communities and use them to find sustainable solutions to global problems. My research focuses on deconstruction and bioconversion of polymeric waste under the advice of Dr. Amy Grandin. I have a master's in microbiology from the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West, where I work with microbes that can live in extreme environments such as salt or the type of microbes that can live on Mars. I have been always interested in environmental microbes and how we can use their enzymes for industrial purposes. As Dee mentioned, clothing is made of some materials that are difficult to degrade biologically and the color of your clothes is not excluded. The color of the clothing is mostly given by synthetic dyes. They have very complex chemical structures that provide lasting bright colors, making them highly resistant to degradation in the environment or to maintain the color after doing laundry. The main concern is that multiple important industries, including textile, paper, food, leather, plastic, and cosmetics use synthetic dyes in their production processes. As you can see, this generates large amounts of color effluents or color residual waters. The disposal of wastewater containing dyes have caused environmental and health damages. These dyes have the potential to reduce photosynthetic activity and affect aquatic biodiversity due to their toxicity for certain species. 
More importantly, dye degradation can release products that are toxic, carcinogenic, or butagenic for microbes, aquatic biodiversity, and human beings. Dyes in effluents can be consumed by fish and passed through the food chain. Its consumption could make people sick by causing health disorders such as hypertension, fever, renal damage, and others. There is a need to develop dye treatment methodologies to maintain the high quality of colorful products, as well as reduce pollution. We can also use bacteria to decolorize or degrade synthetic dyes. Here you see a petri dish with microbes growing in agar, which is a gelatin-like solidifying agent. The dish also contains nutrients so the microbes can grow. In this example, there is a blue dye commonly used in textiles. The top left section is a control containing a microbe that cannot break down the blue dye. In the other four sections, different microbes are having different effects on the blue dye. The microbe in the top right section appears to be the most successful in breaking down the dye, and you can see it is producing a halo effect along with its growth. Thus, certain microbes can represent an opportunity to be used in dye decolorization and textile applications. We can use them at a larger scale to decolorize residual waters and release them to the environment in a safer way.